fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have a resurrection power Can't get old My name is registered in heaven And my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony From dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony this is my testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started.
God's love is so big, so big. It's overwhelming. It's so big. And there are so many people out there that right now, they think God's love is not for me. But God's love is so immense, we can't even understand it. So immense that some people call it reckless. Some people call it reckless. But it's so big that he can leave the 99 and he can come after you. And, and it doesn't matter if you feel like you're on the top of a mountain, miles from anybody, and you just fell down into a pit that you're never getting out and you're going to die there. There's some people right now watching that are in a dark place. And they feel like this is the end. But our God wants to tell you today that it's not the end. He's coming for you. He's actually right there. He's right there with you right now. No matter how dark it is in that pit right now, all you got to do is look up. Because God's right there. And he's just reaching down and he's waiting for you to grab his hand. And all you got to do is look up and grab his hand. Because his love is so big and so immense. And he is such a good God. Father, thank you. Thank you this morning for your reckless love. That it is so big and so overwhelming that you would leave the 99 and that you would come for us. You would come for just me. You would come for that person that's in that dark place right now. God, and I pray that you would touch their heart and that they would reach up and they would grab a hold of your hand because your love is so good. And you're going to rescue them and you're going to bring them out. So, Father, thank you this morning for your love. It's so big. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. What an incredible morning. Welcome to Bridge Church. We are so happy that you've decided to join us this Sunday morning and bring us into your home. We are really, really excited. And it is a great Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Where we have the opportunity to give honor to all of those who have have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom our freedom to worship, our freedom to love our God, and our freedom to to have a revival, because that's what's coming, guys. It's coming. We just want to pay honor to all of those uh, service members. Thank you so much. And so this morning, it is good to be here. I hope all of you are happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. And we're happy that you joined us. Now, We've got a couple of quick announcements for you. And the first one is tomorrow night, tomorrow night at 6 p.m., we're having a drive-in prayer service right here in the parking lot of the church. Just just come drive in. Uh, And it's a great opportunity to pray. You know, you've got an hour to just sit there, crank up the worship music, pray for your community, pray for your family, pray for the church. This is a a really cool opportunity to, to start to, gather back together again. So so come on Monday night, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We're going to be right here in the parking lot. And the next thing, this is really cool. I don't know if you guys knew this, but we're using the version app, and this is our virtual worship journal. So this is an opportunity for you to take notes, to follow along with the scriptures. It's pretty cool. And thanks to the wonders of technology, right now you should be getting a text right there you should be getting a text right now with the link to this okay and if you're not then also thanks to the wonders of technology right below me there should be a link that shows you uh, how to how to text in and, and get signed up for our for our text so this is a great opportunity for you but hopefully you just got the text sign into that this is really cool so and now we're gonna go back into worship And this is our time of worship with our giving. And I say that, and I mean that, because I've really started to look at worship as one thing. Giving, singing, it's all worship. It's all sacrifice to our God. All this singing up here, it's not for anybody here. It's not for you. It's for God. It's for God, and it's worship, and it's sacrifice. And in this time where 
we're being attacked from all angles, all over the place. We're, we're getting attacked from sides we didn't even know were there. You know, maybe you're getting attacked in your finances, in your job. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe your family's being attacked. Whatever it might be, this is a time where when we give, it truly is worship. It's a sacrifice. This is a hard time, and we know that. But it's worship, and we want to continue to worship. In the same way that Jehoshaphat, was being attacked as guys came to him and said, hey, there's this army down here in this valley that's about to attack you, and they're way too big. They are going to beat you. They are way too big. Jehoshaphat said, I need to go to God. That's the first thing he did. He said, I need to go to God. God, what do I do? They're too big for me. It, it came out of nowhere. He didn't know where it was coming from. It came from behind him. He didn't know what to do. He went to God. And through a prophet... God said, you're not going to have to fight this battle. You're not going to have to fight it. You're going you're gonna to march out there, but you're not going to have to fight this battle. So the next morning, Jehoshaphat got up and the army got ready. And before he sent the army out to this valley, he sent the worshipers first. And what's so cool is as soon as the worshipers started praising our God, as soon as that happened... God fought that battle for them before they ever got there and won that battle. And when they showed up, they looked down on that valley and they said, God's won this battle. But it was only because of the worship. The worship started it all. As soon as they started praising, that's when things happened. And so this morning as we give and as we sing and as we give in worship, you're activating God to fight your battles, to win your battles, and you don't even know how he does it. You're just going to show up and they're going to be one. What an incredible God we serve. So this morning, as we let God fight our battles and we give back to him in worship, let's pray over our gift because it's God's. So join with me in prayer. Father God, thank you for all that you do for us, for all of the battles that you fight for us, and we don't even know how you do it. We just get to show up and see the victory. God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you in our giving and worship you with our song. Because God, that's how we make sacrifice to you. And you've given us that opportunity. And so this morning, we give with a heart of thanksgiving. We just give out of a heart of thanksgiving because you are so good and you've given it all to us and we give you back a small portion. So Father, we pray over this gift tonight. We pray over this gift that you would bless the gift and that you would bless the giver and that this gift would go where you want it to go. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right now, we're going to enter back into this time of worship with our song. And as we do this, I invite you to stand up. I encourage you to stand up. And I encourage you to put your arms around your loved ones. And I encourage you to pray over them, to bless them. I encourage you to, to anoint your house. I encourage you because there's breakthrough that's going to happen. Breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming in whatever portion of your life you see that there's a wall that you can't pass. Breakthrough is coming. And so worship with us.
Almighty God, you overcome, defender of my yes. By your power, the oceans open, your fire falls, heaven and earth There will be victory here. 
on, give God a shout of praise. Come on, let's get excited. Man, if that song does not make you want to buy a subwoofer and blow out the walls in where you live, no song will ever do it. I am so just empowered by that song. And, and there will be break to, there will be victory here. I love how the song says here, and I think the writers did a right job by putting it here. But now, how many are tired of watching everyone else see the victory you've been praying for? Every other city see the breakthrough you've been praying for. Every other state, why, do, why does Texas and Louisiana and Alabama and all those places have to be the Bible Belt? Now, I'm gonna, I wanna remove that terminology. They don't get to own that. This is the place that the Lord dwells. This is where God owns. I, I call it an extension, call it whatever you want, but this is where revival, my grandfather in the 1960s used to hold 10 revivals and see so many people baptized and live changed because they called on the name of Jesus and there will be breakthrough. There have been many who've gone before us and they have prayed and they have interceded and they have fought for you. And now, now is the time where God is saying breakthrough is coming and it's by his word we are healed by his word we are delivered by his word we are freed by his word all he needs to do is speak somebody right now in the comments in this place shout speak lord speak because my lord when he speaks everything changes when he speaks mountains have to move and he'll use you as a conduit He'll, he'll use you to be the one that says, you only have faith as a mustard seed, but, but I'm the mustard seed. See, you see a little thing, but in that little thing will soon become a massive tree, but you may have a little bit, but don't call me a little because you only have a touch of me and only you, you only need a touch of me. You only need a small dose of God. You don't need it all. You couldn't handle it all. But if you have just a touch, that's all I need because then I can watch the waters part. I can watch breakthrough. I can break the back of COVID. I can break the back of cancer. I can break the spine of pride. I can break jealousy. I can break greed. I can break anxiety. I can break stress. I can break worry because now I have the word coming from me and I have the power of life and death. You have to believe how powerful your words are. And your words are phenomenally powerful. <clears throat> I kind of want you guys, the band, to stay with me. Can we get stools for you? Is that too much? Are we allowed to do that? Can we, can we have permission? Can somebody help get a couple stools just for our guitar players? And then singers, you can go down and stay with me. And then I want the band to stay with me because of what I'm going to read first, the one I'm going to start off with. So we'll shuffle. They'll fix some things. Don't be distracted by the stools or people setting up. I'm going to clock the people. Let's see how fast they can get ready. Get, them, get up here. Joe, 10, 9, 8. No, <laughs> Um, grab a seat wherever you can, if you can, by the wall or over there, wherever it's comfortable. Alex and Josh, where you're not. Yeah, there you go. You feel good? Is that good? Feel free to adjust and make changes if you need. Um, uh, feel the freedom. Feel the liberty. I want you to go with me. Open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 16. And I want you to go to chapter 16 and verse 10. Exodus chapter 16, verse 10. So everybody right now should be getting out your notebook, your Bible. Um, getting ready to take notes. Take what God is saying to you seriously. If you're on a boat, because it's Memorial Day weekend, you stop the boat, you turn off the boat, you turn up the stream. It's real simple instructions. So I just taught you how to tune into the stream on the lake. So just crank up the volume, Bluetooth into those speakers in that Nautique boat or whatever you're in and tune in today. And so I, I, God's got a word for you. And I'm going to greet some special people here in a moment. But I want to read a scripture to you. And then we're going to jump into what God has to say. It says, now it came to pass. Everybody say now. now. I want you to underline that because... It's one of the most rejoicing pieces of scripture that's said multiple times throughout scripture. And for every believer, when you hear that, if you're mature and have lived long enough, you know that everything has come to pass. And that means that COVID came to pass. That means churches that used to have empty buildings came to pass. That means that revival that has been withheld came to pass and revival is coming. That means that uh, the drought came to pass. That means that everything 
thing that used to be, all the marriage issues, the children issues, the spouse issues, the teenage issues came to pass. Now somebody say it one more time. It came to pass. It came to pass. There will be breakthrough. That's what what breakthrough represents. It's when God showed up on the battlefield and he literally, like a, a, a mighty rushing water, you hear what I'm saying? Like the mighty rushing wind broke through and he took over everything. It was the wind. That's where he became known as Lord of the breakthrough. And so he is Lord of the breakthrough. So that means he's in charge of the breakthrough. So if you need a breakthrough in your life, I almost want to sing the song again. That's your fault. It's your fault for singing it. You pick the song. And this worship team acts like they can sing these songs and not get people all riled up, fired up, and headed in any direction. These worship songs are meant to take us somewhere. They're meant to lead us into a different dimension. And that's exactly what it did today. Maybe it's Monday for you and you didn't tune in on Sunday, but you're able to tune in on Monday. Whatever day it is, you're tuning in and it's breakthrough season. It's breakthrough season. And it came to pass. As Aaron spoke to the whole congregation, I hope the whole congregation is tuning in. Maybe you're part of the the new group of the congregation Maybe there are some people who since COVID, you've decided not to be a part of the congregation, but whatever part you're playing, jump in because God has a word for the whole congregation. And he says this, that they would look toward the wilderness. Everybody say, look toward. And behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. Lord, we thank you. God, Lord, that the glory of God is going to show up in surprising ways, that it's going to show up in front of us where we thought there was nothing for us. We look to the wilderness and we think it's desolation, but yet there's a cloud with the glory in it. We look into the unknown future of 2020 and we wonder what could, but God is saying, I'm ahead of you. I've already gone before you. And I thank you, Lord, that there is a word for us today. There's a hope for us today. We need to not look back. We need to not get stuck. And we need to look forward into the direction that God has for us. Because while there may be wilderness, there's a cloud. And in that cloud dwells the glory of God. And I thank you, Lord, that your glory stands before us. Let us not be captivated by what's around us or behind us, by what, but by who who stands before us. And I thank you, Lord. I pray that you'd anoint me to preach your word today and let the holy fire fall in each and every home and heart and life like never before. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen come on let's give god some praise i'm ready i'm fired up uh god's got a good word you can you don't have to keep playing you can stop right now because i'm going to call you back because we're about to talk about praise and worship i wanted to mainly just keep you harrison <clears throat> because you got the drums and i'm a drummer i love that i love the drummer vibe and but we could keep the extras you know they can be up here too um but i i, I really we're going to go back into it in just a second but y'all don't have to play you're good but i want to uh greet some very special people i'm going to recap and then i'm going to go in some new territory today everybody say new territory, new territory. Um, because we're on a series called dorothy don't look back and we've talked about being unstuck and then we talked about don't look back and now we're talking about looking forward so we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about it today but i want to greet uh some wonderful people That's all of our guests that are tuning in online today. If you're new, come on, give it up for Bridge Church. Say, we love you, comment, we love you, comment, uh, welcome, comment, greetings, like their little shares and posts and let them know we love them and it's great to have them with us. And if you are new, we want you to email us. We want you to connect with us. We want you to message us so that we can send you a gift. We want to bless you. We want to thank you for tuning in. And I have some specific shout outs. Ever since we started this, I, like people have told me they like the shout outs. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll do a couple shout outs in there. We had some very specific shout outs uh, this week. And we have somebody from Tunisia tuning in, Emna, uh, uh, right here. We have your friend Emna from tuning in from Tunisia. That's awesome. Very cool. 
Thank you, Sarah. And then we have uh, tuning in. We have from Phoenix, we have a young football player. Uh, his, uh, his name is Hendrix, and Hendrix talked to his parents and talked to his grandparents about the church that he attends in Flagstaff. And now his grandparents are tuning in the last few weeks, and they're tuning in today. And I want to greet Bob and Susan Johnson from Phoenix. Come on, give it up for them. And maybe the whole family's there. I want all of you to email us so we can send every one of you a gift. And we want to just bless you and thank you for tuning in. Uh, and then also we have Spain, Rildo, Omar, my Rildo, Rildo from Spain. Give it up for Spain tuning in today. And that's the country. That's not another name. Spain, the country, tuning in today. New York, uh, we have Peru tuning in. We have Canada tuning in today. So just, I mean, lots to praise God about. Let's just thank God. So just give us a quick shout outs just to say thank you. Again, we've been talking about uh, this series and, uh, and we've been talking about how powerful it's been and the progression of it. Just like a song, a song starts off, it gets you warmed up. And, and uh, Josh and I are actually talking about releasing a song. We're going to do a song together. And it's because I was on my run and I was running for a, a good distance. And, and so when I was running, I, I just was listening and I was bored. By the music. You ever had that before? You're working out, you're like, nope, next song, next song, next song, next song. Why is my playlist terrible? And I wanted songs that like captivated me. I wanted something that almost spoke to me rather than just sang to me. And so uh, Josh and I are working about a spoken word and a musical piece that's going to be like, just maybe just for me. I, maybe it's just, we were just really, just for my workout sessions. But we're going to release it and we're going to do have fun with it. And hopefully it comes sooner than later. So that'll be a lot of fun. But it's music that builds. It's momentum that builds. It's, it's, it's the word of God that he says, I'll build line upon line, precept upon precept. The, the preaching of the word should always do that. It should never be in this, here's a line, and here's a line, and, and here's a thought, and oh, here's a thought, and oh, here's a direction, and here's a direction, and, and, and the word of God seems so sporadic, and every Sunday and every Wednesday that you tune into whatever church you used to tune in, it didn't really seem like it was going somewhere. But see, when I read at the beginning, is in the beginning, he said, in the beginning, God created, and in the end, he said, all creation is mine. It was building to a, to a concept. It was building to an idea. It was building to Jesus. It was building how the word became flesh. It was building and it builds to his second coming. And every Sunday, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, every week it should build. Line upon line, precept upon precept. And we talked about not getting stuck. And then we talked about don't look back, Dorothy. And we talked about the cute story of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz and her little ruby red heels and how she's not in Kansas anymore and she had to follow the Yellow Brook Road because there's a path that you have before you and you need to follow it and you need to not look back at what Kansas used to be but what the future and potential that's in front of you. And so we talked about that and used biblical scriptures and, and we've been walking our way through Exodus. And we talked about last week, we ended last week on how the cloud and, and the, the fire went behind them as they went through the walls of water on either side. And it was like, are you kidding? Like, that's phenomenal. Everybody who dreams of like, I would love to see that happen, right? And these walls are on either side and, and they get to walk through. And we talked about how God defended them and all they needed to be was obedient in their season and get through what they had in front of them. And so when they did that, they got to the other side and then the walls came down of water and it destroyed the Egyptians. But the interesting piece that we talked about was how that the light of the fire in the cloud was a light for some and darkness to others, and how the Holy Spirit's going to guide you, and some things will be very clear to you, but not to everybody else. So sometimes you're going to get direction that other people would be like, what are you talking about? And, and we, we dove a little bit into that, and I don't have time to go into that today because I want to go into some new territory, but as we, we unpack that, I want you to understand God is going to continue to lead you step by step. That's why the Bible says, let it be a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Because what is a lamp? 
You ever had a lamp before? Who, who's old enough to have a power outage? You had to, you had to go get the lamps of oil that you had to light or broke and poor enough. Maybe that was just what it was. Maybe we were just, maybe it's not so much that I'm older. Maybe it's just that I was poor. Like, I don't know. Uh, but we had to go, I had to go get lamps when we had a power outage in Maine and oil lamps. And I'm walking through. You can't see the way far. You can only see like your next step because what God is trying to show you is sometimes all he'll give you is a next step. But you have to let the word be a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet. And so he's, he didn't show them the whole wilderness route. He showed them the way through the Red Sea. So he didn't give them six steps. He gave them one. And he said, this is what I want you to do. And then the Egyptians were consumed by it. They were destroyed by it. And there's so much to that because then right after in, ver, in chapter, or it says when, they, when they, the walls were up and they walked through, the Bible says they walked through on dry land. Everybody say dry land. Dry land. Dry, have you ever jumped off a cliff? You ever gone into a lake? You ever gone into a murky pond? <laughs> All right. You ever gone into anything like that? I've gone into those. I've gone, to, I've gone swimming in the fishing hole. I've gone to, and that's nasty. It's like full of muck. It's like super deep. And man, you get buried up and you'll, if you add flip-flops on, you don't have them anymore because the muck owns it. And you, and if, if you talk about walls parting of a sea that's been there since before you even knew what time was, that stuff is murky. And the Bible says that they walked through on dry land. The Egyptians didn't, but they did. There are so many miracles. We miss the simple miracles of how the children of Israel walked through the wilderness and their clothes grew with them for 40 years. We talk about all the different things and pieces, but we skip through the, some of the greatest miracles of dry land. And so they, why? Because God said, I want to make it easy for you. I'm going to just walk on through. I already parted the water and I made the land dry. So all the wealth you collected in Egypt can go with you into the promised land because God doesn't want you to lose anything in this season that you are in. God wants you to walk through your season and he wants you to have everything that you walked out with. You left captivity. You left sin and shame. You left the old life. You left the old church. You left the way you used to be. The old is gone. The new has come. And he wants you to bring all the good stuff with you so that you can walk into a new season with all the wealth. Even though God knew that they would take the very gold he blessed them with and they would make a golden calf, he still let them have it. And yet we want to teach about how God is this God of a poverty doctrine, but yet he's the God who gave them the gold to begin with. And he's the God who let them keep the gold even though he knew what he'd do with it. So it, it, God is not about just making you poor just to make you suffer. But you don't realize the wealth you have in front of you and the prosperity you have because you don't have the vision for God. And when you have the vision of God like Abraham got, you'll, you'll start seeing the provision he already provided. But you're passing by it because your will hasn't submitted to him and you don't see the vision, so you don't see the provision. And so when you change your vision, you'll start seeing how God, man, he let me have that. Hey, man, my business made it through it. Man, my family made it through it. Man, my my, my, uh, you know what? My savings account is bigger when we went through uh, after COVID, all this other stuff, we came through this and we're better on the other side for it. I got to keep everything and I got to destroy the very enemy that tried to destroy me. And it's so powerful. I need to start my message. So when you look at chapter 15, I'm serious. I don't know. <laughs> this might be a little long today. But when you look at chapter 15, after all of this, they get through the other side. They, they finally cross over. And when they cross over, they get to the other side. And what do they do? All of chapter 15, look with me. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. <sighs> <laughs> That's why I wanted the band to stay up here because when God finally does a miracle and breakthrough in your life, you shouldn't be thanking anybody but God. You shouldn't be saying anything but singing. You shouldn't be doing anything but jumping and praising because Moses and all the children started singing an entire song. They sang a song verse after verse. It was a long song. It had lots of chorus 
Had lots of verses. It was like that last song we did. It was like you thought there was one song, but it felt like two songs, but it's really one song. And you're like, man, this song is incredible. And Moses was like, doing, uh, he was just like going and going and going. And this long song was so powerful. He had all the men singing with him. Oh, I only heard the lady say amen. He had all the men singing with him. Some of you men who keep thinking that, oh, I can't wait till I get back to church because finally my family will start getting engaged in worship. Let me just speak to you real quick because if, if that's what you're waiting for, worship will never come to your doorstep. It'll never happen in your home and in your life and for your family. If you think a building is what does it, if you think in person is what does it, you've lost the message. If, if you just don't feel it, and I just not feel in the stream, you know, thing. I just don't feel it, you know. I don't feel it. You don't feel God in your home? Because that's what you're saying. I don't feel worship? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because you're the vessel of worship, so how do you not feel worship? Because if you're the vessel of worship, then you're the conduit of worship who has to create an atmosphere of worship. So when you don't feel it, it's not because of a building, a preacher, a person, or proximity. It's because you have chosen not to. Simple. Moses chose to worship. And I love what I want to get to is the, the response. Look with me at the, towards the middle or end-ish of chapter 15 and look at verse 20. So there, all these men are singing, and they end with a powerful verse that says, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. And that's a couple of verses before that. And then Miriam, everybody say the woman, the woman. finally spoke. spoke. Come on, now I'm going to say it again. The woman, the woman. Finally, spoke. finally spoke because everyone was waiting for her. This is, this is, what, this is what triggered everything because it was the response because Worship should be a response because the Bible says that Miriam answered. That's how it happens. Verse, in fact, skip down to, no, let's read this one, then we'll read 21. Then Mary and the prophetess, her sister, uh, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel. Somebody, somebody give me a tambourine. Do we have a tambourine on that drum? <laughs> Y'all remember the old tambourines? And you had to be good at it when you were at church? And you got the double beat? Or you got like, yeah, you could have the moon-shaped one or the round shape, and they had colors. Come on, Joy, where's my old Pentecostal people in here? You had like the pink ones, the white ones, the black ones, and you had the brown ones, and you, had the, and you could tell when like an old grandmother brought hers because it was like old as dirt. And that thing had, it's like, like, who invented that thing back in the, in the, in the and, but when she broke out the tambourine, she broke out the tambourine and when she broke out the tambourine in her hand and all the women, Amen. all the women. So let, let me tell you, we're three and a half million people, roughly 1 million women, 1 million women. All the women went out after her with one million tambourines. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of shaking, people. When, the, when, the, when we all have that phrase, shake what the good Lord gave you, this is where it came from. And it wasn't talking about what you're thinking about. It was talking about a tambourine. Shake what the good Lord gave. And a, a million women came out with the tambourine. And when they came out with the tambourines, they started to dance. And they started to dance. Somebody's worshiping. Somebody's singing about God. They didn't even say anything yet. All of a sudden, can you imagine? A bunch of men singing. How great is our God? How great is our God? I'm not a singer. How great is our And we, they start singing and it's, and it's good. But it's not great. And then all of a sudden, you hear a million and it sounds like the rushing of water <sighs> and wind overcoming the three million people. And all you hear is a million women shaking that tambourine and coming out of their tents and coming out in front of everybody. And as they do, they come out. And the Bible says this in chapter 15, verse 21. It says, and Miriam answered them. 
I want to drop the mic right there for all my preachers who can see where I'm going. Worship is a response. It is not a spectator sport. When you watch them sing, it requires an answer from you that all of a sudden, and, and, it's, and it's not just an answer, it's, it's a greater answer. They sang, they brought tambourines. They brought tambourines, they started dancing. They started dancing, they brought the drums, Harrison. Then they went, can I get some music with me right now? This is the point I had you guys up here for because I'm here to tell you when, when worship happens, it requires and calls for an answer. It requires an answer. Somebody put your hands together in this audience or I'm gonna get a new audience because worship requires all oh, this. You could feel the drums. And then when, when Harrison starts beating that drum, all of a sudden Josh starts playing that guitar. And then all of a sudden you can hear Alex and he's like, what's Josh playing? Well, I'm gonna play this. And then you hear going back and forth and then you hear Sarah on the keys and Tim on the bass. And man, you got mama on the drum. You got it all, you got the whole package because it requires a response. Worship will always require a response. Whether you're at home, at your job, on a boat, in the house, wherever you may be, when worship goes forth, you ought to answer. And she answered with the bridge. And I asked Josh, what's the bridge? And he said, well, let me break it down for you, Pastor Landon. <laughs> it means it connects things. <laughs> so, uh, it connects things. You know, it, it, it really, it encompasses the chorus, the verse. It, it, it brings a place of completion to say, if you heard the whole song, you might get lost in some of the verses and choruses. But if you hear the, the bridge, the bridge will tell you what it's all about. The bridge will tell you where, what it really means, the depths of who it is. So he, she says, hey, I, you did a good job, Moses, but let me bring it all together. And she starts singing, and she's the prophetess. So everybody who thinks that women can't speak in church and can't teach and can't preach and can't be the women of God that they were called to be, you need to go back to the beginning, and you need to challenge Miriam, and you need to challenge God, and you need to challenge his word, because he's saying, no, no, I used the woman to wrap it all up. Because when the man took too many words the woman spoke one sentence and wrapped the whole thing together what man tries to do see there's an anointing on women and they know how to, my, my wife knows how to take all what I just preached and put it into a phrase it's like that was all good but it was all about this she just whew, sums it up it's the reader's digest it's what we all love it's the it's the it's the short version Many of you, if you could read books, you would just read, if they had just like a summary of the book, that's how you would read. And at least you'd read. But we, we, she teaches about the bridge. And she says this, sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. She takes where Moses started. She takes where Moses ended. And she says, this is the heart of this song right here. And I need to teach you, sing to the Lord, church. Sing to the Lord on Memorial Day. Sing to the Lord on Memorial Weekend. Sing to the Lord in COVID. Sing to the Lord when you're just on the other side of the sea. Sing to the Lord when you're walking through the sea. Sing to the Lord, all ye people, for the Lord is glorious and he has triumphed. If God has ever won a battle for you you ought to put your hands together stand wherever you are and start shouting and start jumping and start giving God some praise because we are created to sing a new song oh hallelujah 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 okay 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 y'all are gonna get me preaching for the whole day this is just the introduction of what I want to share with you today, and I really do mean that because we can't go further than our praise. You'll never go farther than your praise because when their praise stopped, their complaining began. It's amazing how quick the singing will stop when your sinning begins. It's amazing how quick the praise will cease when your comforts aren't met. I just don't like stream. 
I just don't feel it. I'm talking to specific people, and instead of naming your names, I'm giving you the grace to understand I'm talking about you. To understand that the complaining has to stop because when Moses, when Moses uh, talked to the people, he called all three and a half million in there. Anybody ever led a group of people? <laughs> Anybody ever taught a class, Rob? Right? And, and when you hear this, like, it was complaining. Was everybody complaining? If I was to tell you, you know, if you had five kids and I'd say they were complaining, could you in your mind, without even seeing them, would you know which kid was complaining? <laughs> yes. As a teacher, you could be like, I know the troublemaker. I know who you're talking about. It wasn't three and a half million complaining. It was just a group. But, but he called all three and a half million. He said, the Lord heard your complaining. And you're not complaining about me. You're complaining about him. And he said, I'm going to deal with them. Don't be in the place where God says, I'm going to deal with you. Don't, don't position yourself like that. Position yourself in a place of singing and praise. Consider, get yourself in a praiseworthy mentality, a positive mentality, a blessed mentality, a winning mentality, a champion mentality, a secure mentality that says, you know what? I, 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 as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And no, I'm not serving begrudgingly. I'm serving wholeheartedly. As for me and my house, we will worship. We will praise. We'll speak highly of our brothers and sisters. We'll speak highly of those in charge. We'll speak highly and bless those and pray for those in authority. We will continue to be who God's called us to be because when you're complaining and blaming begins, your blessing ceases. You're, you're, it's, it's so profound to me how quick it changed because she sings this whole song. I'm not, not even done with the song. Let me finish with her song. She says, for he has triumphed gloriously. And then she says something interesting. She says, the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The horse and the rider he's throwing. Is this a, does Miriam not like horses? Is she just like mad about, is she like killing animals? Is what is this whole thing? Why does she not like that? Why does she say that? Why would she repeat that part? Why not repeat any part? Did you see all the verses? Let me count them for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 verses of a song. And she picks that one phrase. Why? Because this is what the Holy Spirit has to tell you today. When you start singing and you start praising, you're going to rejoice for the victory that God's going to bring you because he's going to destroy the enemy that came against you and the very thing that carried him to you. Because there are things that are trying to be used by the enemy to be harmful for you. And God says, I'm going to destroy the conduit and the destructor. I'm going to destroy the very thing that it rode in on and I'm going to destroy the one who rode in on it because whatever meant to destroy you are about to be swallowed up. They're about to be destroyed. They're going to hit their point because when you hit your point of destiny, the enemy hits his point of destruction. And in this place where they found their place, their point of destiny that first looked like an obstacle, pretty soon became the opportunity. And the opportunity, see the enemy, when he saw you standing in front of the season that you're in, he said, they're stuck. I got them. They aren't going anywhere. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to bring them back. They're enslaved. They're not seeing revival. They're not going to see, I got them. But what the enemy saw as an obstacle that stopped you will soon become the opportunity to submit to you. So now the enemy thought he had it. So he charged wholeheartedly right at you thinking, we got this only to find out that the obstacles in front of you have to submit to the God who is with you. So when you are singing, oh, can I tie a bow on this real quick? When you are singing and he inhabits the praises of his people and what you speak creates, what you say is done, what you begin to sing happens. When you start doing this, all of a sudden he starts 
let me do let me let me take care of the enemy let me move you forward i can do it all at once i'm going to take care of you and i'm going to destroy the very adversary that what he rode in on i'm going to he rode in on greed i'm going to destroy greed he rode in on pride i'm going to destroy that pride he rode in on an adversary i'm going to destroy that i'm putting it all to rest so that i will get the glory and the honor and anything that the enemy tries to bring to you always is with a carrier because he's not going to come against you and say hey i'm going to just try to go after you you're too confident rob no 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 that's the goal so then what's the carrier the carrier is rob you just didn't do it right the carrier is just you know you're not good enough the carrier is oh it's just church doesn't love you the carrier is oh well they sound just like that last church. The carrier is always gonna be the, 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 the op, it's like the Trojan horse. The horse is, it, but it's the carrier of your destruction. But what God is going to do when, when you continue to sing, God will bring you from blessing to blessing, victory to victory, breakthrough to breakthrough. And God wants to do that for you. Oh man, I could preach on that point all day long. But I want you to skip down. Go with me into the end, of, or right there. It says in verse 27, no, let's do 20, end of 26. This is where God declares one of the characteristics of who he is. He says, for I am the Lord who heals you. Why did he say that? Because they got to a place, the water tastes bitter, so Moses shook some sap in it. God is like, I can't do anything right for you. The water's not good enough for you. Your complaining begins. I make it sweet for you. You're still not happy. And he says, look, I'm still gonna be the same God I promised to be and I'm gonna heal you and I'm gonna speak to you and I'm gonna do my will. See, when they, they would have gone from blessing to blessing if the singing would have continued, but they had to taste some bitter waters because they, they need to realize they had a lot more complainer in them than they thought. And so he's like, okay, I need to deliver you. I need to heal you. I'm the Lord. Why would he else would he put this story in there that they have some bitter water and then sweet water and then he's like and then he says after that whole story he says I'm the Lord who heals you he's saying I'm the Lord who delivers you from the very thing that you can't stop doing you inherently do it you destructively do it you have a system to keep doing it I am here to heal you of all the dysfunction that you have had for way too long and you know how I'll prove it even further it says they came to Ilium where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. 12 and 70 without going into a whole dialogue of numerology means the apostolic or perfect perfection of governance for God. So does it 70 because he sent the disciples out in a group of 70 to go before him because he's saying this is how I'm going to disperse my will. This is my will, my way, my order. So he was telling them I'm getting you in order with me. I'm going to heal you and deliver you, but I'm also going to set some governance up for you, some direction for you. I'm going to set some stuff up and I'm going to change the way you used to operate. You used to operate with a Pharaoh giving an order to his soldiers that would then crack the whip and they put you to work. And you've only learned to respond to a whip and a harsh word, but I'm not here with a whip. I'm here to heal you. And my governance isn't with a whip. My governance is with a word of palm trees that cover you, with wells that provide for you. But as long as it's your will that is your well, you'll always run dry. You'll always never, you'll never be satisfied. You'll always be left wanting. But when it's his well, you'll always see his will. And you'll always be satisfied. You'll always watch God provide and provide and provide. And it was 70 palm trees. 70 palm trees, 12 wells. Can we get like some Bahama music? Or I don't know, we, you keep playing that. But they were in paradise. They're in the middle of nowhere and they're in an oasis. And he's like, isn't it nice? Okay, time to get up and move. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. I mean, this is pretty good. We could set up camp. We could plant some more palm trees. 
we got 12 wells let's just stay here God he says no I have more to do with you so don't get comfortable when you get the first taste see I could settle for palm trees and wells rather than an entire land that was promised to me of milk and honey but if i if i don't know that god has something better for me i'll never trust him to move beyond now and now will always look better than what's next as long as you're focused on what you have now but god is trying to get your eyes up to say i know you've enjoyed now but look up because i don't want you to miss what's next and what's next is greater you may not know it now but i want to show you what's to come don't get stuck in the now look your pick your head up like we said read earlier and look forward to the wilderness and I want you to see that what's next is better I want you to see where I'm about to take you I want to take you into a greater place a greater dimension and he says I want to show you into the wilderness of sin and they're like what that does not sound better Harrison that does not sound better but don't live by what you think you see or what you think you hear or what others have told you. You got to live by the cloud. Remember the cloud? Then they saw a cloud where his glory dwelt before them. I want to constantly move towards his glory because whether I'm in a wilderness, whether I'm in the sea, or whether I'm in the promised land, I want to be with the cloud. I want to be with the Holy Spirit. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want to be led by God. I don't want to be stagnant in my relationship. I want to move and flow with him. I want to continue to grow with him. I want to move forward. Somebody say, I'm going to move forward. Because you got to look up or you'll miss what's next. God has something much greater that's next for you. And I'm going to close with talking about a specific, I, I can't go into all of it, so I'm going to have to pause. But he says this interesting piece. He says, in the morning, or sorry, let me back up. Go to chapter 16 and verse 6. Chapter 16 and verse 6. So he, he says, hey, this is the game plan. I'm going to move you from Elam, and I'm going to take you into the wilderness. I'm going to take you into a new dimension. I'm going to take you into a new place. You've never been before. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you. And they're in the wilderness, and God had just delivered them through the Red Sea. God provided with sweet waters. God gave them the palm trees and the wells. And guess what they did? Guess how much they thanked God? And they didn't thank God at all. They started complaining again. How many, if God parted a sea in front of you that you got to be a, a partaker of and walk through as you just looked around like a little child at a pet store and you don't know, you're just walking through like, oh gosh, you know, and you're, and you're just amazed how many would that would be enough for the rest of your life. But they got that, they got the sweet waters, they got the palm. All of a sudden you're walking in the middle of the desert and you happen to find 70 palm trees and 12 wells, enough to take care of everybody, three million people. And you think, and now it's not good enough. Well, where's our food now? Where's, you know, back there we used to have, and they start talking about Egypt. We used to sit by the pots. It says they used to sit by the pots of meat. What that means is they didn't, even, they didn't get to eat it. That was for people who were higher up. But at least they got to sit near. See, what, what you used to sit close to, God is about to give to you. Because what the enemy just wanted you to see and never touch is what God had in store for you all along. So you only got to see other people blessed here, but over here, you're going to be the one who's blessed. So if you'll continue to move forward in faith, God is saying what you used to just sit next to, I'm going to give to you. You used to live next to a neighbor who had it all, I'm about to give to you. You used to watch somebody else's business have it all, I'm about to give it to you. You used to live in a season of lack, now I'm gonna put you in a season of plenty. But you gotta stop complaining and you gotta follow me. And he says, you've gotta see this because then Moses responds and that's where I talked to you about it earlier. I said, he told the people of Israel, called them all together and said, uh, God has heard your complaining. See, some of us think that you, only you and the ones you chose to hear, you're murmuring and backbiting and complaining. You think, and, and so, a lot of times it's because we justify it. So 
we try to justify it and so then we think it's okay but yet God heard it all and God sees the intent of your heart and he says I'm going to deal with you and I don't want to be in that position I don't want you to be in that position I want you to be in a position where you're saying no it wasn't me because there was another couple million people who were like I had no part in that Hey, Moses, I know you're about to melt down this calf and make them drink it. Just remember, I wasn't dancing. I was over here. <laughs> because I, I, I would rather be, I, I don't want to be a part of the generation that had to die in the wilderness. I want to be a part of the generation that gets to go into the promised land. So I don't want to remain here with my stiff neck and complaining. I want to go. Somebody say, I want to go. Come, come on, somebody shout it. I want to go. In all caps right now, you type it in there, say, I want to go. I don't want to stay stuck. I don't want to keep looking back and complaining and whining and murmuring. I don't want to be stiff-necked anymore. I, I want to live with God. And he says this. He says something so powerful and so interesting. He says in verse 6, Moses and Aaron said to the, all the children of Israel, I need you to hear me. He says, at evening, you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. I want you to underline the word no, because he uses a different word next. And he says, and in the morning you shall, Josh, say it for me. See, 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 see. You shall see. So at first it's no. You gotta know. Then it's you shall see. He said, in the evening, you're going to know. In the morning, you're going to see. And, and so, because this is the point that the Holy Spirit gave me for you today. What you go to bed deciding to know is what you will wake up tomorrow seeing. When you decide, I know who my God is. I'm going to see God. When you decide, you know what? I know I, God will provide. You're going to wake up seeing provision. When you go to bed saying, I know they are for me, not against me. You're going to wake up seeing allies. But when you, wait, when you go to bed on your anger, on your bitterness, on your resentment, on your complaining, on your whining, you will wake up and see what you decided to know. Because you decided to know that they're not for you, you will wake up with more enemies before you. But because you decided to know that I'm not loved, you will wake up feeling more desperate than ever before. Because you go to bed know, knowing that you are alone in this, you will wake up feeling hopeless. But be, when you decide in the evening, when you decide up here that I know I know God called me to greatness. I know God called me to change the world. I know God called me to be a witness. I know my breakthrough is coming. I know my healing is coming. I know my deliverance is coming. You're going to wake up. You're going to see it. You're going to watch it. You're going to, it's going to unfold right before you. Oh, it is so powerful. There will be. Isn't that the right, and am I saying the song right? There will be, there will be, there, no, no, no. I, I, I've already decided today what I will see tomorrow. There will be victory in Flagstaff. There will be victory in every home. There will be victory for the United States. There will be victory for the people of God. There will be, somebody shout it with me. Somebody start singing and praising. There will be victory. I feel like I'm unleashed. That what you go to bed deciding that hit me so powerfully. I fought the other night. I, I was so mad and, and frustrated. And then I, I was like, is that how I want to wake up? Am I going to allow that or them to steal my tomorrow? Because what did I say earlier? If you're, if you're looking at now, you'll miss what's next. If, I, if I'm frustrated at now, I won't see what's 
I'm going to get somebody saying it with me by the end of this. If you're angry at now, you're going to miss what's... We need to start going ahead and saying, God, I know it's not that great right now. I'm not going to state the obvious like an idiot because that's what complaining is. I am going to look forward because what's next is where your glory lies and I am going to remain focused looking forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will sing. I will praise. And my singing will never stop. My praising will never stop. My voice will never cease. I will continue to give glory to God every moment of my life. And one day when I'm buried, they're going to say, this man gave his life to Jesus. And I hope your life can be the same way too. To say, I didn't stop singing. I didn't stop sharing. I didn't stop playing. I didn't stop worshiping. I didn't stop jumping. I didn't stop shouting. I didn't stop clapping. I kept fighting with my praise. Come on, hallelujah. I'm going to end with this where it ended up with. They got quail that night. I don't know if you've had quail, but that's pretty good. They had quail. The whole campground was covered with quail. Now, some people could say, well, you know, because of the tides and because of the way the water splashed and the way they come out of the wells, I mean, maybe it drew out foul. I, they, they could try to... Re but when you see an entire campground enough to feed three and a half million people, you're gonna have to say, I know that he is God. And then in the morning they woke up and there was a dew all over the ground. Whew, somebody say the dew. I wanna preach a whole series just on that because the dew is what settled after they knew. Oh, hallelujah until they decided to, to understand that what they knew produced the dew on the ground that would become the manna that you and I know. It, was, it didn't happen before, it happened after. And so then when they decided what they knew, they started to see the dew all over the ground, not on their tents and not on their camels and not on anything else, but it was just on the ground. Why did it miss that spot, but it covered all over right here? Why did it, this spot? It looks like somebody did this by design. And so all of a sudden they wake up and, and they, they grab a hold of this and it's the dew faded. And then all of a sudden when the dew fades, that's when you start seeing the provision of God. And he, it showed a manna. They didn't really know what it was at first. They called it, a, they said, what is this? What is it? I know I'm preaching too long. Is that all right? Am I okay? I'm going to close. I'm going to close eventually. But they, they, y'all don't have anywhere to go. It's Memorial Day weekend. Not only are you off of work, you may not have even been at work, and now you've got tons of time, nothing but time on your hands. You're probably watching this on Monday night in your pajamas right now. So you waited long enough. Take your time. Stay tuned. But he, they wake up, and the, the, all of a sudden, they, call, they say, what is this? And that stood out to me because I think that's important for every one of you. What is this worship? What is this? How do you read the Bible? What do I do with this? What do I, what do, I do? What do I do? How do I cook this? How do I, how do, Harrison, how do I prepare this for my kids? How, how do I take out? What do I do with this? What is this? And they had a lot of questions about, well, how do, why do you lift your hands at church? And they had a lot of questions about why you go to church. And they had a lot of questions about why you read the word because all this seemed foreign to them. It was strange to them. I, I don't understand giving and tithing. I, I, what is this? And they had a lot of questions and God said, don't worry about what it is. Just do it. I want you to collect it. And he says, collect an omer. Oh, I'm going to teach you a new word, omer. An omer actually means a tenth. Not a lot of people teach this, but an ephah a vessel, an ephah, a flower, right? If you were to picture like that, an omer is a tenth of an ephah. So an ephah was a specific size. So then in the ephah, they say get a tenth for every person in your home. So it was a, this is the beginning of tithe before there was a law. So you have to see this principle because it's powerful. And so they said collect a tenth for each one because that's what you'll live off of. And so then they start talking about the tenth, and they, they collect it. And then he says, but don't try to keep it because it'll, it'll go rotten. And sure enough, some of them, man, I love how people are so smart. He says, don't keep it 
two verses after, he says, but some kept it. And, and only to prove that it rotted and wormed. Awesome. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I guess God was right. I probably shouldn't have done that. And they finally learn, like, through trial and error that I probably should have listened to him to begin with instead of having this rotting, smelling, decaying thing in my life. And, and I need to be fresh with God. I need, to be, I need to have fresh manna in the morning. I need to have a fresh word in the morning, fresh praise in the morning, fresh offering in the morning, fresh living in the morning. I need, I need it fresh every morning. And he says, guess what? I want you on the sixth day. You're going to collect it. Why would he? He just told him it'll rot if you keep it one night. He says, but I want you to keep it. I want you to collect twice as much. I want to keep it overnight. And then it's going to last for the Sabbath day, which I want you to rest on. And so they do the exact opposite of what didn't work before. And now it has to work this time. And so they do it and it actually works. Steve, it actually worked. It worked. You want to know why? Because what God says is always true. And he'll take what didn't work for you yesterday and he'll make it work for you today. What used to not work in the past will now work in the future. And the things that you continued to try and failed at and failed at and it rotted in your life and it grew worms and it decayed in your life. He's saying, oh, but it just was the wrong timing. You had the right stuff. But now I need to get my timing with you. And when I get my timing in alignment with you, you're going to be able to see a multiplication blessing and provision and protection over what I'm giving you like never before because it's fresh manna fresh manna and you need fresh manna every day you need a fresh word from God you need a fresh dose from God I want you to stand in here if you're with me stand in here we're gonna close I am going to close this time and I want everybody online to just lock in with me I want the Holy Spirit to move. If you can just keep, yeah, play that song a little bit louder. And Harrison, just begin to beat on that drum a little bit because I can just feel the Holy Spirit stirring. Yeah, stirring something in us, stirring something. I want you to, come on, you worshipers and you praisers and you intercessors, you better start worshiping and praying right now. Come on, those of you who are in this house, you're not in here for show. You better go to work as an intercessor. And I thank you, Lord. You're stirring something up. Something is moving. Something is changing. Breakthrough is coming. And I thank you, God, Lord, that a new day is dawning and I'm going to go to bed knowing and deciding what I already know in my heart what you've spoken in your word and I will choose to know it I will decide to know it and I will wake up and see the healing in my marriage I will wake up and see the healing and deliverance of my teenager I will wake up and see God Lord the blessing of provision in my finances I will wake up and see the hand of the glorious God over my life producing fresh manna every day because I will go to bed knowing so that I may see tomorrow and I thank you God Lord that you are going to provide fresh manna it's going to fall on the ground it's going to fall on the ground oh we're going to get into a season of manna oh come on we're going to get into a season of manna that manna would fall fresh because it was for every home, Harrison. It wasn't for the preacher to bring the manna to your doorstep. It was every home to collect manna for your home and for your family and for your children. Stop waiting on Pastor Landon to fix your family and you need to get fresh manna from heaven above every day because you already knew so you see the dew. And when you see the dew, rejoice and start singing saying, oh, there's manna out here. Oh, there's something new out here. There's some frost on the ground. Something changed overnight. Night. Something that something's different has happened. Something's different in my home. Something's different about my job. Something's different about when you come back to work, when everything's reopened, you need to start praising God. Say something's different. Something's not right. Something's out of place. It looks almost like it's by design. And I'm gonna praise God for the design handcraft in my life. Then I'm gonna rejoice and know that fresh manna has come. Fresh manna from heaven has come. Fresh manna from heaven has come. And I thank you, God, that we will live in a new era of manna. We're not going to wait on a counselor, a pastor, preacher, elder, teacher. Oh, no, no, no. Manna's coming to my doorstep. He called all of you to go back to your homes. And when you wake up in the morning to collect the manna for your family, take only what you need because there'll be fresh manna tomorrow.
Don't live in fear. There'll be more tomorrow. Don't live in worry. There'll be more tomorrow. Don't live, don't live in frustration. There'll be more tomorrow. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God. Lord, you're speaking so powerfully right now. There will be breakthrough. There will, I just feel like we're going to, we need to sing. Go ahead, go ahead. If you are ready to sing, just start singing, team. Your power, your presence. Yes, yeah, that building. Strong. Come on. King of heaven, when you speak, mountains move. Come on, everybody sing. I before the kingdom of God and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us no weapon formed against us shall prosper we will continue to advance the kingdom of God unapologetically moving forward in the spirit of God knowing that there's fresh manna coming down from heaven and every step is ordained by God covered by God protected by God and all I need to do is follow God in my promised land follow God through the wilderness into what he has for me and I thank you Lord and I pray right now, God, Lord, that this gets shared so many times that we break Facebook. And I thank you, God, Lord, that you are going to change lives. Right now, there's somebody who's tuned in and, and there's a disconnect because you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life. And if that's you right now, breakthrough is coming. It's going to break the sins and the shame and the guilt and the condemnation that you felt for far too long. And now it's time for healing. Now it's time for freedom. Now it's time for deliverance. Now it's time for salvation. And for every person who wants to choose Jesus today, I want you to raise your hands and open your heart. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that's when salvation comes. For those who call upon the name of the Lord. And I want everybody to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I receive you now as the Lord of my life, as my Savior, as my Heavenly Father. I'm forever yours. And I'm free. And I'm yours. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Amen. Come on, give God some praise wherever you are. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of this. We're going to speak our declaration right now. And we're going to declare this with power and fervency. And then we've got a greeting and closing for you. So don't click off yet. I know I preached a little while. But go ahead and stay tuned in. This is manna. You need more manna. And you need to be fed. Amen. Amen, <laughs> Woo. Amen brother. Hallelujah. Yeah, somebody. Get, I want a tambourine next time, man. That's, I know. I, I lost my tambourine. So, so I'll have to go dig that out of the attic somewhere <laughs> yeah. or something. I'll bring that out for you. Thank you. All right, you got it. <laughs> Let's declare this together, like Pastor Landon said, with passion. passion. We don't just read it. We believe it. Yes. We have to know it, right? so that we can see it come to fruition. Amen. So let's say this together with passion. I, I am, am a bridge, bridge builder. builder. This, this is my season of favor. I am blessed to live my best. I will choose to love him first. I will worship fully, love deeply, and my community will thrive because I am praying for it. I am a carrier of peace. I will represent God's gentleness to myself and others. I will live out this gospel. I am blessed to live my best because I am a branch builder. Amen. Amen. We know that. Say, I receive it today. Amen. We love you, Branch.
Church, we celebrate you and we'll see you this week. We are so glad you joined us today. If this message spoke to you and you made a spiritual decision, we would love to connect with you. You can do that by sending us an email to info at wearebridge.church and let us know the steps you took. And also, if you're new to our Bridge Online Church family, we have a gift for you. So if you could email us to info at wearebridge.church, we'd love to get your information so we can send you that gift. We're so thankful that you worship with us today. And remember to stay connected because we're so much better together. We'll see you later, Bridge Church. Shake the mountains, break the walls apart, open it.